So Keith, thanks for uh, thanks for chatting for a few minutes today. You and Kristen are are friends of Movement Day. In fact, in 2016, the two of you and and your band, part of your band, were at Movement Day Global Cities. We had 400 cities together from 95 countries, and and your music kind of resonated across all these cultures in the room. Why, why is that about your music, that it resonates so broadly across the world? Well, gosh, I, I really don't know. Um, um, I, I, think, I, think, uh, I think any songs that are helping people sing about the beauty of the Lord, you know, and with, 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 with deep sort of scriptural theology unites Christians, you know, so people see a textual thing that they respect. They want to all love that together. Tends to be anyway. Certainly with certainly with leaders and the caliber of people coming to global global cities movement thing. Um, I, I think it was a little bit as well of I, I loved folk music. So you know, like hymns like "In Christ Alone," right. and "Worth Is Not in What I Own" are essentially pentatonic melodies. So those those melodies could actually be Chinese and, and Indian and and uh, and Brazilian as well. So, I mean, so there's a there's a little thing that they're slightly more folk melodies, which means although they're not contemporary pop, which of course changes in every city culture. Right, um, right. They do have that kind of folk underpinning in the same way as say Gershwin songs had. And so they, 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 can, they can work a little bit wider, so. In fact, In Christ Alone is sung in China, is it not? Uh, by more people than it is in America, so, so yeah. I say. Yeah, at one point, yeah, at one point, our, our pub, one of our publishers, Integrity, worked with, the, we're working with, with, uh, with, with various groups in China and it, it was it it did it, it really seemed it seemed to strike strike a, an extraordinary chord there. I think in some degree with the persecuted church, it was a rallying call, mm -hmm. but I think also broadly as well. So we're thankful yeah. for that. Yeah. Well, let, let's pick up on the global. Here you are, a guy that's born in Northern Ireland. I'm born in Canada. We're talking in the United States, so it's this little mini global conversation. But what what has God placed in in your heart and Kristen's heart? about serving the world with your music? Well, you know, I think we live in the 21st century. We are all global Christians. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it's, our, it's our personal responsibility uh, for myself, but also for how I raise my family, Kristen and my girls, um, how we do church and how we do ministry. And it's a privilege. And, 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 and of course, the internet and other things have added access to it. But, but, but stepping back and taking a broader look to it, 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 it um, you know, you know, it, it's very easy to become uh, concerned with our own, our own little obsessions. And the truth of the matter is, you know, in the last 100, 150 years, Christianity is the fastest growing religion, not just in the world, but in the history of the world. Mm. And uh, which is an extraordinary thing. Now, that, that, of course, like all mass growth, you know, it's not all equally healthy, um, but it is extraordinary. And of course, one of the things which, which you know, Mac Peer uh, so, so beautifully talked about as to Tim Keller was um, and, and now yourself it is the encouragement thing of what's happening in cities it was it was the Apostle Paul's strategy and uh, and so to, to see what is happening in cities and how that will float out to the suburbs and the, and and the, and the areas around them it, it, it is really exciting as well and uh, you know and, and even I was just with somebody this morning I was I was challenged in a radio interview on a Christian radio interview to make to make a political statement about about how to handle coronavirus in church worship because I'm because of the sing movement. They said, "What does the guy who's head of the sing movement?" They brought me on to talk about the conference and they tried to corner me to make a position on on saying. I said, "Well, you know, at the end of the day, the Apostle Paul went around all these different cities and some he got thrown out, some he was arrested, some he was shipwrecked, and uh, you know he wasn't challenging the authorities. Rather, what he was doing was was um, was was." was using these opportunities to, in some cases, just write letters, which you and I have benefited from and, mm -hmm. and uh, do other things. But what I find when I'm with Christians from around the world is I become a healthier Christian. I become a healthier person. Uh, great, yeah. Because I learn, I learn yeah. what my persecuted brothers are struggling with. I realize that so many of my struggles aren't actually Christian, although I sometimes think they are. They're, they're actually just you know, pressures that I've learned from the media, whether it's television or social media or other forms of the media and then I've put them I've put them through my kind of Judeo-Christian moral grid yeah. but actually aren't to do with kind of, so it's a wonderful thing and uh, you know we're excited about it and uh, sing global we prayed last year the start of the year that in the next five years the Lord would make us our organization more deep 
more involved with people every week and more global. And now three months later, the Lord has given us this opportunity to do Sing Global. And would you believe we have the chance to go deeper? We have the chance to work with people every week and with the chance to be, uh, take, take steps to become much more truly global as an organization and to serve believers all over the world. So it's going to be a virtual gathering. Uh, I know you, you talk about this frequently, Keith. What's, what's your vision? It's four days. What's your vision for Sing Global? Several things. Number one, it's about, it's about going deeper. It's four days, but it's actually 365 days. So if people sign up for the Sing Conference, you have this wonderful conference that's happening primarily in Nashville, but on all six continents, there's speakers from all six continents, there's music from all six continents, and the congregational sound is people from all six continents singing and recording their voices and sending it in. So the, the whole thing does have a, a, a lot of representation each day from all six of the continents, which is exciting. You can be part of conversations yourself and communicate with people, um, you can communicate with us. You can access almost every talk, concert, uh, worship service, um, seminar, discussion group, and practical seminar as well. So it's, so it's really trying to create this kind of community that way as well. Um, it's also, we're also looking at a lot of the issues that are core in the church at the minute from, from pastoring our congregation and taking care of people and mental health to how do we really grow our families in this time? It's a very challenging time for families. But nothing has ever, in my life, I've never seen mothers uh, more, more troubled. And yet at the same time, we've never had as big an opportunity to actually influence and to take, to take stock of three generations of, of, of family issues, of, of family struggles, and a chance to turn that around and say, no, let's be the generation who begin to rewrite the rules and reprioritize our families. You know, we get to look at what it means to be online church and a lot of the challenges with churches. Um, and then we get to communicate with people around the world. And again, each time we do that, everything seems to make a little more sense. The, the, the gathering starts August 30th. People can register right up until that date? That's right. You can register right up until two minutes beforehand. In fact, probably two seconds beforehand. And as I said, you can go to gettingmusic.com or you can, just, you can just Google Sing Global and it'll come up for you. And as I said, we have, we have talks. We have talks uh, from uh, John Piper, David Platt, uh, uh, Trip Lee, uh, Professor John Lennox. Alistair Begg, Johnny Erickson Tata. And we could speak from all the different continents. Uh, Miguel Nunez. And we got um, um, just, just literally from, 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 um, from, from all sorts of And then musicians from all sorts of We've got City of Light from Australia. Wow. They're a wonderful new, uh, music group that have written a lot of the songs that are being used in churches today uh, and worship led from groups around, groups around the world. And uh, so we're excited about it. It's a whole new thing. It's a whole new paradigm. Um, both a conference that's four days long, but it's also 365 days long, and you get a weekly letter the whole year taking wow. you through it. Um, and, uh, but it's also it's also global, and as I said, we're um, we're we're pretty busy, a lot of anticipation. I know this is in your heart on the role of music and worship as a part of discipleship uh, for believers wherever they find themselves in the world. That's right. I mean, you know, the Bible itself is, is 20% songs. Indeed, the most common command in Scripture is to sing, if we include words like proclaim and praise and exalt and extol and all those words. And so singing is a very important part of our lives to God. And, uh, and part of that is that, that we, we, we learn and we internalize our faith in a significant part through what we sing. If, if believers are not studying the Bible and singing the Bible, they are unbalanced and ultimately unhealthy yeah. believers. And so it is so important, especially as we look at the church planting movement. And in our cities, we begin to think about the church planting movement and the challenges of that, that we need to be building deep believers. Our, our worship should be beautiful. It should be, it should be joyful. It should be expressive and creative and artistic, but it needs to be deep because it affects how we think. It affects how we, 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 we speak. It affects how we pray. It affects how our imagination works. It affects our memory bank. It'll be the words that we sing now are the words that, that we sing repeatedly now are the words that we will remember in 30 years time. The majority of Bible verses when you turn 60 will be primarily influenced by the verses, the ones that you sing. And so it is crucially important that, that in, in building churches around the world and planting churches around the world, that we are building deep believers um, and building deep congregations. And not just deep congregations, deep families, deep individuals. And, uh, and, that, and that's why the same conference exists. Thanks for serving the body of Christ around the world. Thanks for your kindness. Thanks, Dave. Thank you. <laughs>